Now at five, a local airport will soon get a new upgrade that will open up new avenues for competition. We're going to have the details for you straight ahead. Plus, an expected plea deal regarding Hunter Biden's federal tax charge is on hold. We'll have the latest problems for the courtroom in just a few minutes. And heat continues to be the big story for South Mississippi. And it's only going to get hotter by the weekend. We'll explain more in a few minutes. But your news at 5 starts right now. This evening, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 5. Good evening, Pine Belt, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Carrie Lickett Brown. And I'm Michael Clark. These temps are creeping up yet again, so let's get right over to Patrick. All right, Patrick, tell us what we can expect for this evening and tomorrow, and then you also have not so great news about the weekend, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's still looking hot as I'll get out as we go towards the weekend. Definitely going to see some very hot weather move in. But today, even though it was warm, it was not incredibly humid so that was a little bit of a saving grace there as you can see we're currently sitting out at 95 out at campus view sm feels like 98 with the heat index at the moment almanac for today we made it up to a high of 95 so a few a few degrees above average but uh i mean this is pretty normal for south mississippi for today 69 was the low this morning we're still sitting at our high temperature of 95 right now at the hattiesburg airport 95 in purvis 94 in columbia 92 in Moselle and 91 up in Bay Springs. And for the rest of this evening, not too bad. Temperatures falling into the 80s. Skies are going to be clear. It's going to be a great evening uh, across South Mississippi. But again, it gets really hot this weekend. I'll have the latest numbers in just a few minutes. All right, Patrick, thanks. Well, a big upgrade is coming to the Hattiesburg Laurel Regional, Regional Airport. It will soon have a new aircraft parking ramp. The facility was awarded a multimodal transportation grant of a little over $275,000. It allows the airport to expand the area where airplanes can be stored, fueled, and serviced. This grant was awarded through the Mississippi Department of Transportation. I love to try to get federal and state dollars here to the Pine Belt for two reasons. It adds great infrastructure to the airport, and makes us very competitive, and makes us a, a modern, safe, secure airport. But the second thing is that money that comes here is spent by our local contractors. And there are people who pour concrete, you know, build houses, but that money comes back into our economy. The project is expected to start in the next three weeks. The Lauren Rogers Museum of Art in Laurel is setting up its latest exhibit. Our Cam Benelli takes us there. Experience the art of Vincent van Gogh in a new, immersive way with the Lauren Rogers Museum of Art's latest exhibit, Van Gogh for All. It's an educational slam on the works of Van Gogh. We don't have actual Van Gogh paintings, but there are reproductions that have been created in all sorts of ways that can be interactive for adults and for children. The museum began setting up the exhibit this week. Produced by the Dolores Cole Education Foundation, the exhibit provides a hands-on experience that brings the works of Van Gogh to life in interactive ways. So there are probably about 12 to 15 specific interactives um, that are large scale. And then there are drawing stations and um, not painting stations, but still portrait drawing stations and there's still life drawing stations with uh, flowers and other things that kids can pull and I think they'll have a great time. There's also a digital display where viewers can manipulate Van Gogh's Starry Night. But there's a lot of a uh, number of interactive digital pieces so Starry Night is big and full of life on the screen and students or adults can can play on the monitor and change the whole design and composition of Starry Night. Through this immersive experience, visitors can interact with his paintings in 3D form. When you walk in, it's bold in color. Uh, the set this is very much like setting up a, a theater stage. Each compartment, uh, or like the one behind me, is three-dimensional. And so we're building these sets as we go throughout the week. So it's, it's inviting you in to experience the painting, not only just visually, but in a 3D way. The exhibit is set to open August 15th and run through November 5th. In Laurel, Cambinelli, WDAM7, on your side. And admission to the museum is free and open to the public. Well, today is the second and final day of the Sun Belt Football Media Days. That's right. Our sports team has the latest from the conference. Taylor, what can you tell us tonight?
Well, the East teams took the stage Wednesday in New Orleans. James Madison was picked to win the East, and Troy was actually picked to win the West by the coaches. They take the top spot in the preseason coaches poll, while Southern Miss falls in at number four. The Golden Eagles, three players named preseason all Sun Belt, led by first teamers Jay Stanley and Frank Gore Jr. Of course, their time at the podium was Tuesday afternoon. And we'll hear from Coach Will Hall and company coming up at 6 o'clock as they get ready for the start of fall camp next week. All right, Taylor, thanks. Well, a plea deal between the Department of Justice and Hunter Biden fell through this morning. President Joe Biden's son faces federal tax charges after a probe by the Department of Justice. Now the hearing on those charges, which was expected to end with a plea deal, is on hold. Cole Higgins reports on what's next in this case and the possible political implications. Drama in Delaware. Hunter Biden's expected plea deal with the Justice Department unraveling in a federal court in Wilmington. U.S. District Judge Mary Ellen Norieka not accepting a plea deal between Department of Justice prosecutors and Hunter Biden's legal team. Very telling that the judge intervened here and said basically, no, I'm, I'm not going to approve some sweeping blanket deal. Judge Norieka saying she's concerned by the two parties seemingly linking a tax plea agreement to resolving a felony gun charge, calling the deal in which Biden would end a diversion program to resolve the charge unusual and eventually asking both sides to file additional briefs explaining the plea deal's legal structuring. I mean, that, that tells you that the court has serious concerns about other potential charges here and also the scope of the deal, which has seemed outrageous from the beginning. Prosecutors say Hunter Biden failed to pay between $1.1 million and $1.5 million in taxes before legal deadlines. Biden entering a not guilty plea for now. Meanwhile, House Republicans moving ahead with their own broader probe of the Bidens based on unverified allegations that the president is tied to his son's foreign business deals. There are serious questions about uh, about potential corruption and that ought to be ought to be a concern for every American and it is for me. So far there are no proven links between Hunter's business deals and his father who has denied any involvement. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. The Federal Trade Commission is finalizing an antitrust lawsuit that could ultimately break up parts of Amazon. That's according to Politico. The lawsuit is expected to focus on several areas, including Amazon Prime, rules that the FTC says block lower prices on competing websites and policies. The FTC believes force merchants to use Amazon's logistics and advertising services. Politico says their reporting is based on four people with knowledge of the matter. The lawsuit is expected as early as August. If successful, it could lead to a court-ordered restructuring of the $1.3 trillion company. Several COVID-19 pandemic-era benefits are set to expire this fall. About 28 million people will have to start paying their monthly student loans again in October. Stabilization grants for child care will also go away at the end of September. About 3 million children could be affected as thousands of programs could close. Also, about 500,000 people could lose access to food stamps when work requirements for the benefit resume in October. A new survey suggests American businesses are expected to fare better in the coming months. A survey from the National Association for Business Economics released this week shows businesses are enjoying better economic conditions. The group's president said it reflects an economy of rising sales and profits as material costs decline and stabilizing wages proves less challenging. This year has seen a steady slowdown in inflation, which has increased consumer confidence in the economy. Coming up after the break, it's the only word that really matters. Hot, heat, it's all that we're talking about this week and into this weekend. I'll explain more coming up.